Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. We have completed the modeling of supports in StatPro and we will now talk about the modeling of loads. We will talk about two types of loads basically in this series. The point loads or the concentrated load and the uniformly distributed load. But before we go forward, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel and join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. So let us see what we mean by a point load or a concentrated load. Let us consider this table configuration that we had been discussing in the last two sessions. As you may remember that this is called a cantilever beam. Now let us consider a load acting on a single point at the tip of this cantilever beam. This load will create a vertical reaction and a moment at the fixed end support of this cantilever beam. Now, when we talk about the point load acting at the tip of this cantilever beam, this is important to understand that this is an idealized assumption as there is nothing like a perfect point load. And point load is nothing but a pressure load that is considered to act on an infinitesimally small area. With respect to StatPro, the point load is defined with respect to the global access system. To know more about the global access system, you can click on the link that is appearing on the top right of your screen right now. Thus, this point load that is direct directed along the positive direction of global X is defined as Fx with a positive value and the one in the opposite direction will be defined as fx with a negative value. Similarly, we will define the load as fy and fz if the load is directed along the global y and global z direction. The one directed along the positive direction of the global axis will have the positive value and the one in the opposite direction to the positive global axis direction will have a negative value. Please pause on this diagram for a moment to check if you have understood the concept clearly. Now let us consider the case of a point load acting on the tip of cantilever beam. Let us consider the load as 5 kilonewtons. With respect to the global axis system as shown, this load will be defined as Fy equal to minus 5 kilonewtons. Now let us model the point load of Fy equal to minus 5 kilonewtons in Stat Pro. What you see on the screen is the model of the cantilever beam that we had created in the last session. Now Remember that we have defined the geometry, we have defined the properties, we have defined the materials, we have defined the specifications, if any, if there was nothing in this beam. We had defined the supports. So now it's turn to define the loads. So we click on this loading option. And on the right side of the screen, you will see the load and definition window popping up. So click on the load case details option and click on new. Let us define the load case as a primary load case, <clears throat> which is load case number one. And click on the add button. Now the other two types of load cases is something that we would define or we would discuss later on. But for now, we will define all the load cases or the, all the load items that we define as a primary load case. So what is a load case? A load case is nothing but a collection or an envelope of load items. Now, once we have defined this load case, load case number one, let us click. We can open this window and simultaneously work in this window. So let us click on the load case number one and click on load items. Now, we have to define a concentrated or a point load. The concentrated or a point load can be defined as a nodal load. So let us click on the nodal load option here. So click on the nodal load. And now we want to define 
Fy as minus 5 kilonewtons. So we will go here and define minus 5 kilonewtons. Once this is done, we would click on the add button to add the load item under the load case number one and we hit the close button to close this window. Now we go to the load item of FY of minus 5 kilonewtons defined under load case one in the load and definition window and we use the cursor to assign it to the node. So but before we do that let us switch on the nodes so shift plus K and now hit FY minus 5 kilonewton use cursor to assign click on the assign button and we click on this node and you would see that minus 5 kilonewton has been defined now the load looks to be uh, very big but we could control the scale of this by going to right clicking on the structure and go into the labels option and then click on the scales and what we can now do is for point force what we can do is click on apply immediately and we increase the value for point force and you would see that uh, the point load now on the stat screen um, is shown to scale so we click on apply and OK and uh, we can even display the load value if you want to. So if we go to labels and you can see uh, the load values option, the hot key is V. So shift plus V or clicking on the load values would display the load value on the screen. So you can see that this point load is defined as minus five kilonewtons. So this is how we can model the concentrated or the point load using the nodal load option in StatPro. However, there can be situations where the point load can be inclined. So what we see on the screen is a simply supported beam system with a pin support at one end and a roller support on the other end. Now, from our last sessions, we know that this is a stable configuration. Let us consider a load of 10 kilonewtons acting at the center of the beam and which is inclined to the horizontal by an angle theta. Now this load can be resolved into horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal component will be 10 cos theta kilonewtons and the vertical component will be 10 sin theta kilonewtons. With respect to the global axis system, we can define these two loads or these two component loads as two separate concentrated loads as fx plus 10 into cos theta kilonewtons and fy as minus 10 into sine theta kilonewtons. I hope you understand by now why fx is positive and why fy is negative. So what you see on the screen is the model of the simply supported beam that we had created in the last session with the pin support on the left side and the roller support on the right. If you're interested to know in details how we had modeled this pin support and the roller support, you can refer to the last session by clicking on the link that is appearing on the screen right now. Now, let us consider that in our case, we have a 10 kilonewton loads that is acting at the center of the beam, a point load, uh, of 10 kilonewtons acting at the center of the beam and which is inclined to the horizontal by 45 degrees. Now we do not have a node at the center of the beam. So since we are going to define the nodal load uh, using or, or since we are going to define the point load as a nodal load, we need to have a node at the center of the beam. And how do we do that? So to do that, we need to select the beam uh, we need to be in the geometry option in the first place. We need to select the beam. We need to click on the insert node option and click on add a midpoint. And uh, if we click on OK, we will see that the beam has a node created at the center, the node number three. The node number one was the left side, 
the left end node the node number two was the right end node and the node three is now created in the middle but what you'd also observe is that the beam now which was a single member from node one to node two has been split into two parts node uh, from node one to node three is beam number one and from node three to node two it is beam number two now it is still a simply supported beam okay and the results would be consistent across these two members now we will explain more about uh, why the member has split with respect to finite elements when we discuss in more details but please consider this to still to be a simply supported beam so now we have created node 3 at the center of the beam now we go into the loading option load cases details we click on the add button we create the load case number one click on load case number one go to nodal load and now we have fx defined as 10 cos 45 degrees right so what we'll do is um, we'll uh, just open the calculator from um, from the computer so we just need to define 45 degrees and um, we find need to find out the cosine of that so click on the cos so it's 0 0.707 multiplied by 10 kilonewtons so that is 10 cos 45 degree and we see that we have 7.1 kilonewtons in the horizontal direction so plus 7.1 kilonewton in the horizontal direction and remember that the cos 45 is equal to sine 45 so in this case also the load would be 10 minus 10 sine 45 so we define that as minus 7.1 so instead of defining the actual inclined load what we have defined is we have defined its horizontal component as plus fx cos theta and its vertical component as minus fy sine theta and we click on the add button and, and now we can see uh, the load item being added under load case number one so we click on that load item which is fx plus 7.1 and fy minus 7.1 and we take the use cursor to assign option and assign it to node number three and uh, press shift plus v to display the value of the loads and we'll see that um, a point load has been defined at the two point loads has been defined at the center of the of the beam uh, one is a horizontal load of 7.1 kilonewtons and the one and the other one is a vertical load of 7.1 kilonewtons so this is how we have modeled an inclined load in stat pro however there is a direct way of modeling inclined loads in stat pro in the recent versions and we will discuss that in the next episode in the next episode we will discuss how we can model um, the point load, the inclined load directly in STAT Pro and also how to model the uniformly distributed loads in STAT. I hope you have liked the session today. Please do hit the like button and help me share this with someone who would be looking out for a similar content. So see you in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye.